Hello and a very warm welcome everyone. This is Marta from Drop of Sunshine and welcome in my studio. My friends, today we're gonna have another chit chatty video and this time this is the topic you've picked up yourself. A week ago I've asked you what would be the next subject you would like me to chit chat about and vast majority the overall of the votes uh, was for uh, talking about the how to price your handmade cards, your handmade artwork and I feel that this is a very important topic we are actually not giving enough attention. I know myself when I was just starting a card maker, when you start this card making hobby and I'm sure that this is the case for many of us, we love it so so much that we dream of nothing more than having this card making hobby turn into the uh, the lifestyle uh, into something we could do uh, create the whole day who wouldn't like that in order to become a card maker and start selling your card there's a few things uh, i would like you to take under consideration uh, so uh, i will be talking you step by step and uh, one thing i would like to tell you my friend and this is the disclaimer at the beginning that whatever you're gonna hear today whatever i'm gonna tell you this is just purely my own opinion i am not saying that this is what you should do this is how you should do it no i am just sharing with you my own observation my own thoughts my own experience and you could uh, both way you could agree with me you could disagree with me uh, you could partially agree as well uh, please let me know down below in the comments what's your thought because maybe and especially in the cases you are disagreeing with me i would love to know what is your uh, what is your arguments in that maybe there is something i'm missing maybe there is something i haven't considered into my own uh, thinking process so please please share it with me uh, i would love to hear your feedback i would love to hear your own opinion and your voice because it's matter to to me as well we, after all when we create, when we share the information, we do tutorials, we do chit chat video, we are sharing them not only for giving uh, our experience to the world, but also to learn something ourselves. Because many occasions, if I am presenting technique, if I am presenting some video, your comments also could bring a lot of the value uh, to help me improve my skills, to help me improve my my insights or thought thinking process of something. So please, please, uh, let's have this uh, lovely, uh, friendly uh, discussion. Whether um, you agree, disagree, I would love to hear your voice on the matter as well. Now, first thing, before you start selling your cards, uh, I really, really recommend for everyone to do a little bit research what are the laws and regulation in your country after all if you would won't find out what uh, is the point of you selling card you have to register uh, if if it's any minimum amount you, it will obligate you for registering your business or to pay some taxes and you fail on that you could then suffer a really serious consequences you could get fined you could really harm and damage your own card making career in the longer run and this is not worth it a little bit of the research will help you to to put yourself in a better position to sleep well to uh, have your business card making um, little handmade uh, workshop working on a on a good starting points and will help you to avoid any future trouble so uh, please do your own research uh, you, everyone who's watched my video i know my video has been watched from all over the world they've been watched from united states they've been watched from here in uk but also from poland uh, i have some comments uh, people who are watching me from netherlands from uh, Australia so all over the world so that's why I am not gonna be telling you about this uh, rules and regulation because they could be different for your country they could be different for your specific area so please do a little bit of the homework before you start selling cards so this will help you to avoid any trouble in the future now speaking about the uh, pricing your handmade goodies 
I feel that there's two things which comes kind of the obvious, but I want to also tell you about a few other things which I should, which I think should be considered uh, in the, um, given the price to uh, the final product of your hands. Uh, first uh, of the like obvious one is the cost of the supplies. And this is something I really recommend for someone who's just starting uh, the beginning of the journey and you kind of be uh, new to card making, you're new to the hobby, you still don't know how to price your product correctly. And this was something I had a really, really big trouble myself because as a beginner, I was feeling like shy. I, I had the price in my mind, but many occasions uh, I knew like, oh, I should ask such and such amount of the final price for my card. But then I was opening my mouth to the customer and I was saying like pound or two cheaper straight away because uh, in my head I was just scared what if they're not gonna accept the price what if this what if that uh, we are often uh, comparing ourselves with the price we see uh, for cards being in the stores in the supermarkets these are really really cheap they are mass produced they are all many occasions they just come out flat print from the from the machine and they could be that cheap because producing them doesn't contain lots of supply, lots of time. So uh, please do not compare your price to the prices you see in a store because uh, you are creating something totally different. You are making handmade pro product, you are creating a little piece of the artwork and you should not compare yourself to uh, to the price which are in a supermarket because it's the same way as restaurant who's cooking from the scrap would compare uh, which uh, not from the scrap from the beginning like they chop all the veggies they cook them they prepare the lovely delicious meal and they would compare their prices to the ready-made meal sell in a supermarket it it doesn't work this way so don't feel intimidated don't feel like you need to match up with the prices from the store because it's totally different things now if it comes for the price of the supplies one thing i could recommend it was a good exercise for me and helped me to learn myself about uh, putting the price on the supplies whenever i was buying some supplies like paper pad or mm, pack with the ready-made card bases with envelopes I was dividing the price of the packaging into the single item so if that was a 25 envelopes with the cards and they were costing like 10 pounds or something I would divide that 10 pound by 25 and I knew how much exactly it cost for me to use one card base with envelope and then I knew how much it cost me one single sheet of the design paper uh, how much cost me one meter of the ribbon and it doesn't ma uh, mean that oh if you have like 30 different ribbons you need to uh, you know check every single detail up to the penny which ribbon was costing as much no but just keep in mind that roughly your ribbon cost you around uh, such amount per meter or something like that so you know if you use up at 30 centimeters to tie a bow or something you can add that fraction of the price to the total price of the supplies and why you should do that because many occasions we don't realize all those little we think oh it's just two gems or it's just a bound or it's just a piece of this or that this is little but all these things add up and you would be surprised if you will take under consideration all the embellishment all the pieces of chipboards all the farmyran flowers or something like that you add to your cart you would be surprised how much total value they taken away from the price of your card because after all if you are selling the card and let's say you ask five pound of it and the cost of material cost you two pound you're not asking for a five pound you're asking for three pound so think about that uh, so make sure you do that uh, a little bit calculation at the beginning to make sure to write down you don't have to do it forever but quickly if you will do it uh, 
uh, on the consistent basis for a few months or something you will be better at judging how much your uh, product final card uh, artwork cost in comparison to supplies used in the in the part particular artwork and one thing i would like to let you know from the beginning that different materials different brands they have different prices uh, if for example one time you can buy a paper pot which was in a discount store for a pound or two because they do sometimes have those miscellaneous baskets with all type of the crafty things or bits and you can buy the paper pot over there then you can order a good quality designer paper pot from i don't know stamperia or some other beautiful company herford creation or graphic 45 or any other really beautiful paper which are more on a pricier uh, point comparing to this cheap paper make sure you kind of match up your price so if the customer will buy a card from you and then they will uh, return to you for another card and you will present them with the similar card but this time you will made it from much more expensive materials and you will raise up uh, significantly your price by pound or two or more the customer may ask you like oh why you charge me as little in the first time and now you're giving me similar card which costs uh, much more because the customers they don't shop craft materials they're not always aware of of how much something is costing so uh, make sure that your prices are kind of uh, match up uh, which i don't mean that uh, you should always rise the the cheap material card as much so it match the most expensive one but just try to keep the balance so in case it, some of the customer will return to you for the second card and you're gonna be making it from the more expensive materials from better paper or using some more like i don't know copic markers or this or that uh, the better quality watercolor paper for or coloring or something make sure uh, your prices are kind of a balance so so the customer not gonna be uh, doubting you in in case like oh why did you charge me so much this time when the similar card was costing much less the previous time uh, so uh, having this exercise of writing down uh, your supply list for for the cards at the beginning will help you out to to better judge to be quicker and with the time you can just uh, stop doing that because you will kind of know how much it costs you to create a project in in terms of using the paper uh, to packaging and this and that so this is all things you have to consider in the supply uh, in the price of your supplies used for the for the particular artwork now another thing which is very important it's and it's one of the most important and i think it's also one of the hardest to do is to charge for the work of your own hands and in this society we do have this uh, perception of the card to be as more fragile as something we which we're not gonna be holding forever there are some customers who treasure their cards and they hold them for many many years but in general opinion because the market is saturated with so many cheap cards from the supermarkets uh, especially like christmas cards or something they are coming like sets of 20 or something for a pound or some other like ridiculously low prices in the opinion of other customers they sometimes appear as something which is like oh just to give and then toss away after some time so um, this is makes our job much harder because if you think about that if you spend four hours on creating the particular piece of artwork and uh, the minimum wage of pay is 10 pound you should be able to charge 40 pound because you work four hours times 10 that's 40 pound for the workload plus the cost of supply if you will order some service i don't know if it's a mechanic if it's electrician if it's plumbing or something someone will come fix your thing and they present you with invoice and invoice states exactly like uh, such and such amount for the supplies like uh, materials used and then you have this uh, price per work per hour or something look 
on that no one uh, their prices are really sometimes could be really really high but no one has even second doubting like oh why did you charge me so much for the work and the situation with the card making seems to be much much different that uh, we're not always able to charge exactly the price of the hours we are spending because if we will charge our cards for 40 or 50 pounds no one will buy them so this is really hard uh, but i don't want you uh, please please don't be shy to give yourself an honest uh, price for your own art uh, work for the time you're spending in your studio because if you think about that if this is the pathway you want to go if you want to create the card making for becoming your style of of your life of your work something which uh, provides you for the bread for 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 supporting your family uh, you cannot give that really really under uh, underway price because it's not gonna be sustainable that they have only 24 hour and if you will be charging like as little money for so many hours you would have to work 24 hours seven days a week and you will still not make enough money to support your family so this is a thing you you would have to consider and especially from the beginning i know it's hard we always think like oh if I'm not uh, doing it for a long time, I should have it cheaper or that. And this also embedding this um, opinion in the customer. Okay, you always want it like three pounds for a card. And then if you would like to rise up your prices, some of the customer may think like, oh, why you're asking me double the price now? You, you, you always wanted this or that. So this is help you to avoid the trouble if you will price uh, your cards correctly from the beginning this will help you out straight from the from the beginning now uh, and speaking about the pricing the workload of the time think about that this way if this is the way you work in if this is the way you you making your money every hour you spend sitting behind the desk creating whether it's in your studio or you just working from the kitchen table or, or something like that whatever it is every single hour you spend on the crafting you're not spending the hour elsewhere you're not spending the hour with the family you're not spending the hour uh, with uh, training up yourself for another career or something like that uh, you're not spending the hour at work because you are working crafting so uh, think about this way uh, give yourself an honest price uh, as much as you can to to give yourself a fair uh, fair pay for all the work for all the heart you're putting into your cards another thing which i think it's important to consider in the pricing your own handmade artwork is the price of the tools obviously we cannot give a price like it's hard to uh, even calculate how much it costs for single use of the die cutting machine or how much it costs for uh, stamping using the black ink on the stamping or something like that or one drop of glue from the bottle of the glue or, 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 or things like that but my friends I if if you're buying this uh, this um, expensive equipment you do not know that this equipment will need some extra uh, refresher from the time like your ink pads they will need some re-inkers at some point your die cutting machine will require new plates your trimmer will need new blades or or uh, cutting machine will need need new cutting scanning mats or things like that so all this equipment cost really uh, it's really expensive and I feel that personally, if you're using that equipment, you should be able to add a little extra commission, like a, a little extra, I don't know, 50 pence or a pound, dependingly whether you're using gold foiling machine or this or that, uh, to help yourself to build up once you're selling your products you will have that extra a little drop of the money from each car to help you out to keep a uh, to keep a good supply on the on the having this expensive equipment or maybe help you out to buy another stamping platform or this or that so definitely something 
to consider that all those things which we use like a, a bottle of the glue or texture paste even if you buy uh, a jar with the texture paste or something this could dry out with the time you will need to replace it or or other things like a markers or something uh, everything has its own usability so by using those those tools we should be able to to also pay for the equipment because if you go to some specialist and they use up some equipments they they're not gonna have a, a blink in the eye to to add it to their invoice that they are using it so why you shouldn't have why you shouldn't do the same thing now another thing which i think it's been very uh, little talk about and uh, i feel sometimes this is the area which is being a little bit neglected which is experience and think about this my friends uh, if you're working in the card making industry for many many years you have invest a tons if not hundred if not thousand of hours of your free time to train up yourself you're using your own materials you're skilling up uh, yourself constantly you're learning yourself drawing new techniques you skill up your your all sorts of the knowledge uh, you're learning yourself of different types of the inks or this or that we take that time we're taking the learning and maybe we don't uh, treat ourselves in the same way as lawyers uh, and doctors and other uh, working working people like other uh, in other jobs but we do invest our time we do invest those long hours into training ourselves and many occasion uh, many crafters they use up some workshops when you have to pay for participating in the classes or something like that so we as we grow experience i feel that we deserve the right to also reflect that experience in the price of the cards don't feel yourself intimidated to give yourself a little bit of re reward for uh, hundreds of years uh, uh, hundreds of years <laughs> that would be awesome if we would live as, as as long but of those hundred of hours you spend sitting uh, in the craft room into uh, working on your experience now last thing i would like to um, bring your attention to if it comes for pricing your own card is the card uniqueness it's different when you create the 10 of the same cards and you just like uh, maybe slightly alter the color but you basically recreate the same card several times but whenever you create this one of a kind uh, beautiful project which is uh, well thought composition uh, you give all the full extra design thinking process to it you should be able to reflect it in the price as well because my friends uh, we are spending time to design those cards and many occasions for those big fancy cards uh, we are not only spending hours on the creating them but there is also an extra work we create when we uh, initially design the composition when we take out all our dice try to think maybe this maybe that uh, shall this be in this shape or that shape so uh, we try different color combination to uh, put together maybe a darker shade or this and that and i'm finding myself that many occasions when i'm preparing myself to create that very unique uh, design i'm taken off 50 items uh, different dyes colors and and things like that and i'm trying to match up to have this initial idea for the design which i'm gonna be creating and this also it's something which i feel that this deserves some uh, a little bit recognition in the reflection of the price of the card because after all uh, this is one of the kind of cards so we're not going to be repeating it again because we designed it for one particular occasion or something like that so that's my thought that's my thinking of the what things should be included in the price of the cards and i also want to tell you a few more things which it comes from uh, pricing your cards as i was saying at the beginning please please do not feel yourself intimidated when the customers is comparing the cards uh, from the supermarkets to your cards let everyone know be polite uh, but let them know that what you create it's not the 
simply print you have to create all the steps you have to you have to uh, cut glue you have to shape the flower you have to color the images let the customer a little bit inside of what steps you have to uh, make in order to create the product for them and in the same way uh, don't let the customer to put a pressure on you that uh, if you if they're gonna buy three cards from you they should be cheaper like in the supermarket rule buy two and third one free or something if you're gonna be create three cards it doesn't mean you have less work because yes maybe this could be a fraction of the time uh, quicker because you already have the same spread like uh, uh, all the elements out stamps out and and this but you still have to stamp and if if you have the uh, stamp and die set for making a card you still have to use the same one stamp and stamp it three times you still have to use the coloring markers pencils whatever it is to color three images and then you have to use the same die and run it through your die cutting machine three times to in order to be able to create the three cards even if they are similar in design and it's taken away from the uh, thinking process like what should be card look like it still takes you three times for create three cards so don't get yourself under the pressure that if someone is buying cheaper uh, it should be it should be like if someone is buying a, a bulk it should be cheaper because the, the the handmade items they are not bulk items they are handmade so each single one of the items it's handmade so you're not uh, doing it out from the printer you're not doing it you you have to create every single bow if the cards contain the bow and you make it three times you have to tie three bows you have to uh, do every single steps for each single card in order to complete it now uh, another thing which i want to tell you my friends i feel like this is just purely as i'm saying based on my own observation and uh, my own experience i'm not uh, saying that my way is the right way you have your own rights you have your own decision and i am only uh, adding this to the discussion because uh, maybe there is something you haven't take under the consideration and uh, i would like to point your attention to uh, so so maybe you could you could think of it and at the same way if you have a different opinion please let me know so i could take some lesson from from you i could take some other things under consideration i feel that if it comes for selling the cards we're not talking about the giving the cards because obviously we all create the cards and give them away we give them to our family we give them to our friends we give them to uh, charities and things like that so that's different we are only talking about the the when you made the decision to sell your cards and if you decide to sell your your cards i feel that there is two kind of a way uh, our crafting community is divided there is a group of the crafters who are uh, deciding like i love it so much i want to uh, make the card making my way of living i don't want to do anything else uh, apart from making cards and maybe i can do because every person is different sometimes there are uh, there are different life situation maybe someone is caring for some uh, elderly parents or some kids at home they're not everyone is in the position when they can make up commitment to go 90 till 5 to work or, or something because they could have a different house situation they're not always able to take a regular work so working as a card maker is for them a great opportunity to fit their life around the life situation they have they could work on the morning they could work uh, a little bit during the day or they could work late at evening they could uh, work they schedule around their life situation so so that's why they i've they've decided to go with the card making as the their way for making a living because this helped them out to work the their schedule around their what what is their personal situation and needs now uh, those crafters they are trying to make their 
best in order to price the pro uh, project the artwork to make sure they will have enough even though as i've mentioned you at the beginning we are not always able to put a full price for every single hour we are creating the cards but at least we're trying to maybe just give ourselves a fair chance for uh, for giving us a little bit enough to to survive to, to to help our families to provide for our families and then there is also another group of the crafters who are selling the cards who are receiving the money for the cards but they keep saying like oh i don't want to make a business this is just a hobby so i'm gonna be charging like just two pound or 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 something like that and this uh, this way when you are lowering your price to the minimum and uh, what what it does it 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 is firming the beliefs in the customer whoever uh, buys the card they see like oh the card in a supermarket costs two pounds the card from this crafter costs two pounds and all of a sudden there is a different crafter who wants like eight pound what is like what, what what's going on and i'm not saying this to to say that you don't have a right to do it it's your own decision if you decide if you're having enough blessing in the life that uh, you you don't need the money you already have another source of income and this is hobby for you uh, please be considerate that whenever you're you're selling your cards you putting the price on your cards you kind of uh, put the price tag or and uh, embed this price um, into the customer head so whenever they are searching for a handmade goodies they already have this perception that oh the product could cost uh, the pro this product this handmade card card could only cost two pound three pound because if it costs ten pound it's too expensive and i'm telling you this because uh, i want to give you an example uh, see if if you have like your family have a little business uh, your husband is a plumber or someone and uh, and did he is one person like little business like a uh, you know taking a small jobs repairing things and that and he is providing for living in your family and then all of a sudden across the street from your house someone else is moving and uh, they have a good job they don't have to worry about money or other things but he likes to repair his stuff and he goes and start repairing uh, things in your neighborhood for the uh, next to nothing money like so so coffee coffee kind of a pay money and um, all of a sudden you either find yourself that your business is losing the customer because if someone is having a chance to get something done for nearly as free they will go there or the rest of the remaining customer may put a pressure on you that oh i've seen some something somewhere else cheaper and how would this affect your family dynamic how would this affect your your future the way you can provide for your family so think about that and i'm not saying that uh, you should uh, necessarily rise up your price to skyrocket but even if you feel like you don't need the money you can sell your cards for a pound or two by giving this very cheap cheap price this is uh, kind of a uh, as i'm saying that it's forming this belief in the customer that this should be price paid for the uh, work of hands which is which is work of our hand and not only hands but also our hearts and um, it's it's really put those prices down not only for you but for everyone else and i want to give you one suggestion if you feel like you don't need those money have you ever thought what good thing you can do with the money because if you will put the fair price into your cards you don't have to keep those money you could uh, spend those money on charity you can pass those money to the food banks you can pass those money to cancer research to other places to support there's lots of people who are raising money because they need some specialty wheelchair or something uh, there is uh, all different types of the of the charity funds which are raising money to sc for scholarship for young talented uh, people who are trying to change their life situation they would like to change their life but they don't have a money so there's so many things you can do with those money if you will put a fair price 
for your cards, for your handmade artwork. This will not only help you, you can do a lot of good by passing those money if you don't want to keep them, but you will also make a lot of good for uh, the crafting community in overall. Because think about that, all our supplies are cost costing so much. All our time, uh, we crafting, we don't spend that time with the family. We don't spend that time somewhere else because we are sitting in a craft room. So. Uh, give everyone a fair chance to 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 make their living if this is someone if this is uh, the thing someone else is dreaming for uh, please please uh, be more considerable uh, how you price your artwork so you're not gonna be negatively affect the whole community uh, i think this is more or less everything what i was planning to say uh, I would love to hear your thoughts about the about this subject, whether you agree, whether you disagree. I'm not necessarily saying that I am in the rights and everyone should do what I think, uh, like what, what I've told you. Uh, no, I am just telling from you from my perspective, what is my opinion, what is what I feel like is important and what we should do, because I feel that uh, we deserve as a as a crafter, as an artist, as a creator, we deserve the right to be fairly paid. We deserve the right to be recognized and rewarded for our hard work because many occasions, and I know many crafters who are there, they will agree many times we are crafting, especially if we go to the point when we get some, um, a little bit like recognition in our area. And we, we have lots of order, new customer, coming asking for the cards many occasion i found myself to crafting till the late hours at night and uh, i love that and i would never change anything but if we will be uh, doing this uh, how to say that um if we're not gonna give ourselves a chance for uh, for giving ourselves this honest pay and reward for our work soon it will be impossible uh, to become a crafter without co-working with bigger uh, businesses without writing commission to the magazines to working in design teams because uh, having making a pay from purely doing a cards it's already hard as it is because as i've mentioned you at the beginning that cards are perceived as more fragile goods so they are not gonna be priced the same way for the work time as piece other piece of art like a paintings or something but many times we are using watercolors we are painting the leaves the flowers all sorts of things on our cards so please please give yourself a chance believe in yourself and definitely don't be shy because in the worst case scenario if someone will say it's too expensive you could then maybe renegotiate or just say thank you and find another customer who will uh, agree for your for your prices for your uh, for the money you were asking for the artwork you are creating thank you so much i hope this was bringing you some sort of the value and if it did please please uh, don't forget to give a like uh, to comment say hi uh, say what's your opinion of the subject i would like to know uh, uh, i really really would like to know what's your thoughts on that as well and last thing uh, my friends if you will go to the community tab uh, just now on my on my channel there is another questionnaire with three options for you to choose for the subject of chit chatting for the next time stay blessed and i wish you all the best oh and tomorrow because it's a friday tomorrow is something uh, i've got a little surprise for you so don't forget to uh, to visit my channel as well because there is going to be a little surprise I'm, I'm planning some blog hop and a giveaway so i'm warmly inviting you for that as well stay blessed and i wish you all the best bye bye <music>